So um, the title of the presentation that I'll be listening to at this session is called is, is um, Students Stand at the Door, Exploring Views on Professionalism in Midwifery um, Spaces. We have two presenters, Moira Lewitt and Tom McEwen. I'm going to introduce um, the two of them to us uh, very quickly. Dr. Moira Lewitt is a physician who has worked in universities in uh, Australia, in Sweden and the UK within um, joint roles. She started her training as a clinic, in clinical medicine as a consultant endocrinologist. Uh, Moira has, uh, is a fellow of the Royal uh, Australasian College of Physicians as well as the Royal College of Physicians in the UK. In 2009, Mora joined the University of the West of Scotland as a senior lecturer supporting innovation in learning and teaching. She was awarded a professor, personal professorship in 2010. Please uh, join me to welcome Mora. Our second pr presenter is um, Tom McEwen. Uh, Tom is a midwife and has been practicing uh, as a team midwife, delivering caseload based care. He is a senior charge midwife within a neonatal unit and an advise, advanced uh, neonatal nurse uh, practitioner. Tom is currently the head of program for the women's children, young people and families team within NHS Education for Scotland. And he has been a midwife since 1999. Tom is an honorary advanced neonatal nurse practitioner within NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. He's uh, undertaking clinical teaching around newborn examination. He's a, board, he's a board member for the Scottish Court Death Trust, and he has uh, published uh, in numerous uh, peer-reviewed journals and written um, textbooks, midwifery textbooks as well, uh, including Physiology in Childbearing, uh, which he wrote with his uh, mentor uh, and friend, uh, Professor Jean Rankin. Uh, Tom, you're welcome. So I will now hand over to uh, Tom and Moira for their presentation. Thank you very much, Aditoro, and a very happy International Day of the Midwife to everyone who's, who's joining us. Uh, Moira and I are delighted to have the opportunity to, to share our research uh, with you. So, really, maternity care occupies many different spaces in the public consciousness. For many, it is an essential and value component of our UK National Health Service, but equally, and more recently, it has been the subject of much criticism in the media uh, with suggestions of a broken public service. And this has been encapsulated within several formal inquiries, uh, notably Kirkup in 2015 and more recently Donna Auckland in support in 2022. And this has undoubtedly impacted on the perception of professionalism, particularly in the UK maternity care context. And the notion of midwifery care and normality at all costs being mentioned in various forums and questioning our professionalism as a community. And that professionalism is a key characteristic that we expect our students to develop throughout their programme. And part of our role as educators and clinicians is to support that transition. And considering this, this component of their journey to become a midwife, it provided really the impetus for this research project. And we're going to present some of the components of that from, from the published article. So a performance turn has emerged in qualitative inquiry. In particular, poetry has been used to explore feelings and to open inclusive spaces for health promotion, for example, and it's used as a, a therapeutic tool in some settings. We use poetry to help connect in the present moment and also uh, to connect to past feelings that are evoked in that process. Um, the changes that are taking place in midwifery today, it's are emotional, having performance questioned, those reports from government inquiries are upsetting, 
public perception of midwifery as a professional group, perhaps devalued sometimes. All of this elicits emotional responses that impact on the experience of our students. For this research, uh, in a conversation with midwifery students, we captured and performed their words as poetry. This was an immediate performance in the moment, and therefore we believe it's a novel approach. So what did we do? Well, we wanted to have a professional conversation with the selection of students, and we were fortunate enough to have participation from two bachelors of science midwifery students and two masters of science midwifery students, all of which were in the final year of the programme at the University of the West of Scotland. And that was important because we wanted to understand the experiences of those about to transition to become a registered midwife and, and make that, that transition uh, in the very near future. And when we considered how best to have that conversation, we developed a range of questions, a series of questions that I asked this group. And these revolved around defining professionalism, had their view of professionalism changed during their, their time as a student? Do we need to better define professionalism? Is it adequately explored within our curriculum? And how does that transfer into practice? But the reality is that these questions, my contribution in posing these questions was very quickly overtaken by the, the huge amount of responses from those and that conversation was led very much by the students. And in anticipation of that conversation and, and to try and help, we, we brought a series of images that we laid out for the students to help them to consider how they, how they might respond to these questions. But what we found is that very few of these images were, were selected. The conversation just developed and evolved so naturally uh, and the students shared their experiences. And these are just a couple of the images that were selected. We did uh, audio record the conversation, but in addition, my role was to sit to the side of the group and transcribe in real time some of the words that were spoken. So after a conversation of about 45 minutes, I then performed those words that I had captured to everyone and I joined the circle for further discussion. The entire conversation uh, was recorded, transcribed as uh, short phrases with line breaks where there were natural speech pauses, so it appeared as poetry on the page. Then both researchers, both Tom and I, independently read and reread the transcript, identified concepts, discussed the concepts, and then connected the concepts together through a concept mapping exercise. That helped us to refine and identify the dominant themes. And these have been published in the February issue of the British Journal of Midwifery. So in that paper, we use some of the poetry to illustrate the themes that we're going to present now. So we identified five dominant themes within that research, and we're going to deal with each of these in turn. And what we're going to do is for each of these, we're going to show the words that were found within that conversation and also perform some of them there and give you enough time to, to read the slides and read that, that found poetry within there. And those themes surrounded midwifery spaces. They surrounded the notion of bad professionalism. So being able to recognise what bad looked like. The notion of control, which is such a fundamental component of, of our roles as midwives and, and trying to ensure that that woman has control. About, we should make it more personal, about how at times they felt they had to remove the, the personal part of, of themselves in order to survive and function, and having to walk into that, that door um, to, to perform as a midwife. So some of the spaces we identified are, are shown here. So the space within an organisation in that clinical context, the educational space within the university, a true midwifery space, considering that role, and also a space for reflection. In the organisation, you have to step 
into a different pair of shoes. You have to have your different hat on. In university, you're told you're important. In practice, you're not. Senior midwives sit. Junior midwives stand. Students stand at the door. In the midwifery space, we just sit there as students and they just blank us. We don't really exist in their little chat. But there are reflective spaces. And this midwife says, don't do that, come with me. Sit on a chair and we sit and we have a full discussion about exactly what's happening. Now the notion of these spaces where as described by the student spaces that they inhabit, spaces they move between during their journey to becoming a midwife. They very clearly articulated that move between the university space, that space of, of learning, that theory building, that developing an understanding, and that application into practice. But they also spoke very clearly about feeling like always a midwife. And considering that in all of their interactions, in their social lives, in social media, and saw so these spaces as ever interconnected. And in stepping into the space of an organisation's, students often felt bringing those personal attributes, but needed to leave some of that personal outside that room in order to survive, in order to function as a midwife. However, they also made clear that stepping into the private sphere again, that those professional standards of conduct accompanied them as they moved in there. Words are power and affect people. They can be flippant, they can swear. Everybody has their moments, but it is unprofessional. Also unprofessional, ticking those boxes, all sorted, ticking those boxes, and afterwards get her up to the ward quick as possible and get the bed back. That feeling over your shoulder, keeping you in check. You shouldn't have done this, you should have done that. Scared the sister's going to shut the door and tell them they've done something wrong. And that notion of being watched, being closely watched and monitored, linked to that next theme of control. Sisters keep everybody safe, that's their role. Every single woman, midwives as well. But the safest thing to do can also be holding power over. And some people don't feel in control unless they are controlling. But you can't handle a situation like when you see something wrong. Instead of instantly reacting, take the emotion out of it. Take a breath. Find a way to stay calm. Take the emotion out. And that final thought linked to what the students articulated, having to remove the personal, which linked really well to our next theme. I thought professionalism was being strong, someone in power. But it's caring for women, doing something good for your woman. I'm allowed to be here. I'm allowed to protect this woman, allowed to have the birth that she wants. We should make it more pure personal. We are all human.
As students, the further you're walking in the door, you don't have the dread, the fear. You're going to be confident, competent. When you step into being a midwife, you're going to be a mentor, an educator. You're going to be nurturing people. Can professionalism be taught? Yes. There's a professional language, professional behaviours. Can professionalism be taught? No. You can't teach compassion. It's a really powerful language that we captured in that conversation. And in terms of what we learned, we really find that despite its complexity, our educational problems often frame and our students see professionalism is simply a list of attributes and behaviours and as the students spoke about their experiences they often referenced the code, this code that would make them a professional. However they also saw themselves as always a midwife and, and that notion of moving between different spaces, most notably between university and practice but that also mixed in with their social lives and they're developing an understanding of professionalism from how they interact in that ever-growing social media world. But there are also tensions between these spaces. And there was a sense that from their experiences and seeing different role models, you know, examples of bad professionalism, that fast midwife who was focused on the tasks and not looking at that woman, and also a sense that midwives feel constrained and fearful by external forces, that external scrutiny when our profession is called into question, that, that need to practice defensively, in some way limit their ability to support the needs of women in childbirth. We learned that poetry is a wonderful tool. Uh, this in the moment poetry helped us to uncover emotions, capture emotions. It helped us to elucidate and communicate the views of participants. We've also found poetry helpful in our discussions amongst ourselves as researchers. Uh, these students also told us that the words that I performed to them created a shared voice they couldn't differentiate their own voice. We, we believe that the use of poetry in this context uh, allows emotions to be more authentically conveyed, therefore adding to the power of the message. And we also believe that this approach will be of interest and value to those that are developing pre-registration curriculum, developing that educational framework for midwives in practice in that wider community, particularly understanding this notion of spaces uh, and ensuring that we're incorporating that into our conceptualisation and design of these, these programmes. And this does build on other calls for research in this area, for example, from Catling and, and Rossiter uh, and more work that's required. And I think probably what's helpful is probably for us to share our reflections of, of using this approach and. And I think for me, it did take me out of my comfort zone. It, it was a very new way of thinking about the world and thinking about research. But there was something about it that, that just resonated with the artistry and the science of midwifery and, and the theme of our, our conference today, our celebration today. And the sense that I got that we often overlook the artistry within midwifery and, and focus more on the science and, and sometimes we feel we're being forced to focus on the science and forced to forget that actually it's relationship based care that we are providing and looking to, to provide and support and nurture. Um, and the other thing I was struck by was the power of, of how powerful the words were when they were put together, the findings of this research, the spoken voice of our, of our participants conveying it within poetry and performing it back how powerful that was and as Moira said that single voice the students the student felt it, it presented that it was impossible for them to disentangle exactly what they said but they knew their voice was there 
um, and it was shared with the voices of the others. Your yeah, so I, I'm not a midwife, um, and I think that not only in midwifery but across healthcare, that connection between artistry and science is, is not always strong. Yeah. Um, I really think you know, this. What I experienced here was tapping into the emotional, how the students were feeling. And it was certainly an emotional experience mm -hmm, for me um, when I reflected those words in the moment, particularly. Um, I can sort of feel mm -hmm. the hairs on my arms. Um, and I have the honour of, of being here and sharing those, mm -hmm. those voices. Um, and I feel emotional mm -hmm. about doing that. So we are, I, I mentioned that Tom and I are using this in, in the context of our research, and we're using it in developing other mm -hmm. research. So we've created a small group, mm -hmm. we meet regularly, we record our discussions, um, and we, I have been performing excerpts mm -hmm. of those research conversations back to the group mm -hmm. uh, at the start of the next meeting, which facilitates mm -hmm. our ongoing research development. Mm -hmm. um, and it's different to this, to some extent, but uh, it has also been a very yeah. powerful experience. I'm very grateful yeah. for that, Tom. And I think for me as well, it's given me the opportunity to experience how the students felt being part of a conversation and having my words, although some of my words were captured in a poetry as I facilitated the discussion, actually the dominant voice was, was the students. So being able to hear and participate in conversations, not just about McWiffrey, but other, other um, subjects and, and topics um, has given me a real sense of how effective this can be used uh, as a tool to convey findings from research in a, in a really powerful way, a, a power that isn't there just when you, you read the words, although I think I would be interested to hear your thoughts in reading the poetry, did it, did it cause a, an emotional response in you as well, um, as well as hearing it, it recited back? And I think in terms of, of our key recommendations from this study, really at the top of that was this notion of spaces. And it wasn't just physical spaces, it was conceptual spaces. It was a, a movement between thinking about midwifery, thinking about the practice, thinking about the world that they're practicing in, thinking about the world they're about to enter as a midwife. So there was lots of movement in there. And we feel that this is something that's missed within policy uh, and in curriculum design. We're, we're lacking that understanding of the experience of those that will be part of that educational journey or part of that process. So co-creating it to make sure it's integrated. And the other thing was that the, the students articulated really clearly that the woman was at the centre of those spaces. Those spaces evolved around that notion of the, of the woman at the centre. And there also does need to be consideration of that wider culture in healthcare and how that influences and impacts in, on educational spaces and how that impacts those future role models because what students are seeing in practice, they are emulating those behaviours because if they don't understand that that might not be the type of professionalism that we want to see, it's hard for them to see that. But having a space they can think about that and conceptualise that is really important. And capturing these experiences of, of these students just at that threshold, at that precipice of going into registered practice, um, we strongly believe will, will be helpful as we design educational programmes to ensure that students do understand professionalism from the earliest point. And we'd like to encourage the use of poetry. Um, it certainly enabled someone who is not a midwife, me, to contribute and help allow that student voice to be heard. Uh, it certainly facilitates research conversations, or we've used it in that context, and it's a powerful medium uh, for thematic analysis and dissemination of findings, I hope, today. Mm -hmm. um, we recommend further research that explores the impact of poetry on those engaging, you know, the participants in the room, an external audience, for example. Can we use poetry in education mm -hmm. to, in relation to developing professionalism um, and contribute to an understanding of how and why poetry taps into the emotional? So what do you think? So we'd be really interested in, in having some time to, 
to hopefully have a bit of discussion and if anybody's got any questions or comments, um, I know the auditors there uh, as well, but we'd be really interested in hearing, particularly if you've got any experiences of using either poetry or creative performance type methodology in research within healthcare, or whether you feel it has got value or, or to the contrary, if you feel it, it doesn't have value, but we'd be really interested to hear thoughts, but thank you uh, for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Moira and Tom, for that um, brilliant presentation. Thank you. That was really engaging and uh, very thought-provoking uh, as well. Uh, I think uh, we all know that uh, midwifery as a profession is both an art and a science. And just like what you uh, talked about, you know, the connection uh, between the art and science is not always um, strong. So thank you for using an art-based approach, you know, uh, for your research. Um, there were some uh, comments uh, as you were presenting and um, some of them were just to thank you, you know, for using a poetry as uh, an approach, you know, for, for your study. Uh, there was this comment about uh, power over versus power from within. And I know you talked about it yourself in terms of, okay, uh, control doesn't have to be controlling. And we know that some people don't feel that they are in control unless they are controlling. So what are your thoughts um, around, you know, that comment? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great comment um, because power is something that can be easily abused and power that can be used um, inappropriately. And I think what we try, and I'm speaking from the perspective of being a midwifery educator, we, we try to instill in our students this sense that we are there as a companion on a birth journey. We are there to support that woman um in that in that experience and we are not there to control that experience or control decisions or control the environment to control we are there as a as a support as a facilitator as a companion um and i think that's not always what students will see in practice and there's a disconnect there that causes attention and students find that quite difficult and come back and, and, and tell stories. And yes, there might be situations where the midwife has to take a measure of control in, in an emergency, for example, and, and give direction. And But ultimately, we need to always remember that the power lies with the, with the women. It doesn't lie with us. And do you think students feel controlled by the more senior midwives yeah. in a way that's... <laughs> dominating and not necessarily helpful. I think that's an, another key strand of it is that, you know, that they feel that their future is in the hands of someone else, that someone holds power over them. So in order to survive, it's comply with that and, and be, um, be subservient to that, which is an abuse of power in itself. And, you know, we are trying to support students to develop into autonomous, accountable professionals in the future um, and if they feel the, own, the only way that works and they see it work is that someone is is controlling that not just the control the midwife but also exerting control over the women um, that's obviously not what what midwifery is about it's about with women it's not not uh, not to be used in other ways Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there are some comments also. Uh, Buki is saying uh, this is so uh, emotional. Thanks so much for your presentation. Uh, Linda asked a question. How did the students feel about being asked to write uh, poetry? Well, we were in control. We didn't ask the students to write. We let the students speak and I captured their words myself in real time um fortunately i type quite quickly <laughs> <laughs> um and we could i mean we can compare what i captured with what they actually said on the sure. audio recording um so i think it takes some i guess it's some skill and some insight into what's being said um it, it's quite difficult to do in some ways i think i felt quite brave mm -hmm. doing it mm -hmm. um 
and I guess that's also why I felt emotional. That's right. So that's you right. open yourself, stitched. you are vulnerable in that. So yes, they didn't write, but they spoke. And I think when you listen to voices of people talking, mm -hmm. for me, it comes as poetry. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Does that answer your question, Linda? I hope mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, thank you. Um, Joe has shared our insight into using um, creative approach as well uh, for mm -hmm. Bachelor of Midwifery program uh, students in their first year and um, third year. So I think um, a lot of researchers are, are beginning, you know, to look at this um, innovative approach, you know, much more um, uh, in uh, various parts of, of the world. Uh, she described how they had uh, creative freedom and they can use dance or models or books or artwork, you know, to uh, show their insight into their midwifery uh, journey. So thank you so much, Joe, for sharing that. Um, so we talked about um, the fact that she loved the way uh, of explore the, the, using poetry, you know, to explore uh, experiences uh, of students. Uh, so uh, thank you, um, Selin, for your comments. Um, Nikki Grace has. Um, added our uh, insight into uh, the presentation as well. Uh, she said, it's wonderful to hear the emotional aspects of midwifery uh, acknowledged and student perspectives uh, highlighted. Some of the findings are sad. I have used poetry as a reflective tool at workshops and I'm currently researching for a PhD in creative mm -hmm. writing. I think what your session, Amora and Tom, has done is to um, uh, you know, spark um, this um, interest, uh, you know, uh, uh, with people, with very, with researchers. And I hope that we can also take this discussion, you know, beyond uh, this um, session and beyond um, the, the conference. So please feel free to reach out uh, to Tom and Moira. I think um, their contact details at the beginning of the, of the, of the slide. Uh, um, I can see a lot of maybe discussions going on after the conference and a lot, possibly some collaborations as well so uh thank you so much for all your insight uh, i i think maybe another comment that people may want to ask also is that when you are talking about you mentioned you know the number of students uh, that you had and uh if uh people want to ask in terms of what do you think are the maybe the pros and the cons if you have maybe bigger number of students, maybe larger uh, uh, participants, would that still be uh, feasible or what are your thoughts in terms of if you well, have I've, more students? I've used this in a different context uh, to capture the voices of, it was more than 12, 12 to 15 doctoral students talking about their challenges mm -hmm. in terms of tackling methodology, epistemology, this sort of thing. and. I just sat at the side and captured some of what was being said and um, um, I can't present this because I did it in the moment. It was sort of spontaneous and I reflected back all their all their feelings and challenges that they were having and went around the room almost pointing to them. And it, it made us, it made was a really good contact. And I must say the, the lecturer who'd invited me and in really didn't expect that was surprised, delighted, um, and it really encouraged me. I think it depends on the moment. I think what is important is not to expect too much, but to open yourself to the possibility. Um, and it, you know, it, it may be that it doesn't work some of the time. Um, I've been fortunate, but yeah. 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 And I think just on, on that as well, from a midwifery perspective, I think there is a midwives have got a creative soul. So I think this does lend itself really nicely to, to exploring views of not just midwifery students, but midwives themselves. I think there is, there is something in there that, that when we started the conversation, the conversation just flowed and you know what was captured and turned into poetry when you watch the students responses to hearing their words spoken back to them in captured poetry um, and i think it adds a level of emotion that you don't get from just reading the poetry actually having someone recite that poetry with 
faster pace when it's dealing with that, the notion of the fast midwife and that staccato type beats with it. And then the, the spaces for pause and reflection so that you can think about it as you go. It was just really incredibly powerful. Um, but I think it is that that whole idea of the art and science of midwifery is just so fundamental um, that it is there. And, uh, you know, so whether it would work in the same way with nursing students, with other, I, I don't know. Um, but as Moira illustrated, you know, those doctoral students thinking about philosophy, epistemology, it does require engagement from the individuals you're speaking to. But I think them having that experience of, of their voice being captured in poetry is, is quite incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's very um, insightful. Um, there has been a request um, that you should please put your details in the chat box. So if you don't mind um, doing that, um, Tom and Moira, uh, that would be very, very um, useful. Thank you. Um, Selin has said, learning comes from making connections and poetry is a royal way to do that. So uh, thank you so much uh, for that um, comment. 